Hey everybody, Spuddy from Spuds Games. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm gonna run you through a flyback repair for this beauty, a Sony PVM 2010QM. Stay tuned. So long story short, uh, I knew that this had a problem flyback in it. Uh, when I picked it up, I did a part trade for an RGB modded Trinitron that I'd done for a guy. He gave me some cash, plus he threw in this as well. Um, if you go back to the previous video, it shows you where the crack is in the flyback. Um, and I'll show you in a minute as well. Here, I've got it out. Um, and you could see all the soot and the damage that the, 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 the damaged flyback had caused internally. So uh, I had no doubt it was the flyback that was the problem. Uh, so I had to go about sourcing a new one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop up some details in the corners and the screen and whatnot as I'm talking, just so you guys can get an idea of what I'm talking about. Uh, but I had to, obviously because I had to source a new flyback, it was going to take some time and a lot of research. So I had to start with the service manual for this uh, particular one, which is the 2010QM. They list a 1439-322-00 flyback as the part number. Obviously the first thing you do, go and punch that into Google doesn't really exist anywhere. There's a couple of forums saying, hey, does anyone know what the replacement is for this, blah, blah, blah. And there, were, but there was one guy who mentioned about a splice, an alternative um, flyback that they use. I thought, okay, park that one, keep that in the back of your head. Did some more research, um, found that this has a US counterpart. So I thought, okay, right, let's, let's look at that service manual. Everything in that service manual pretty much mirrored what this service manual had, even down to the revisions of the boards that they used. But for some reason, the flyback on there was listed as a 1439-322-11. Thought, okay, right, oh, mine's a 00 that I need. This one's an 11. Can I use an 11? And guess what? The 11s actually existed. I could buy them. Okay, right, oh, so I did some more research. Jumped onto HR Diamond or Diamond or however you want to pronounce it, who do a lot of aftermarket CRT um, flybacks. They actually list about four or five. Sony flybacks under one part number that they manufacture. Unfortunately, they don't manufacture that particular one anymore. But in, in my back of my head, I'm going, right, if they covered off four or five Sony flybacks under one of their part numbers, maybe electrically, there isn't a difference between the 00, the 11, or the 12, as they listed on their website. So I went to another website, Donberg, who actually uh, do a lot of second-hand flybacks. They pull them out of CRTs as well as I think they do new ones as well. And it's a very similar thing. They list a 1439-32200, a 11 and a 12, all under the same heading with one picture of a flyback, um, you know, and you can buy it. So I thought, okay, right. So if they're listing it under one as one flyback that you buy, maybe, again, electrically, there is no difference between these flybacks. So I had to work out what the difference between a 00, zero revision was, a 11 one, one and a 12. Now what I've put it down to is two things, uh, mounting and whether it's got an anode cup or a HSTAT lug. And I'll show you what I mean by that when I open this thing up, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, but that's what I put the revision down to and it was kind of a bit of a punt um, on whether that was actually the case or not. Uh, I'm no flyback expert so I kind of had to go, you know what? I'm just going to get what's available, which was the 1-1 revision, and hope that it's going to work. Now, doing a little bit more research and parking that thought I had from that forum, he mentioned that he picked up some 1-1s, but it had an anode cup on it, like this. Now, Sony PVMs generally don't have this setup. What they have is the cable will have a lug on it, it'll go into a HSTAT block, and then another cable will come out of the HSTAT block and go up to your... Um, your CRT with a cup on it. So I kind of thought, okay, righto, this part will work. What? If, how am I going to do this part, the connection into the CRT itself? And he also mentioned a splice kit in this forum. I thought, okay, righto, let's let's look at it. And the part numbers that he mentioned for this this CRT anode splice kit actually still existed. So what I went ahead and essentially ordered was. A box of 1-1 revision flyback, so 1439322-11. I actually thought I only ordered one, but it was one box of four, so I got four of them. Um, and I also ordered, and because I've actually installed it, what they call, uh, and I don't have a picture of it, I'll throw it up actually in the corner of what it looks like, what I bought it from eBay, 
is uh, ECG, they're called, which I think is a brand, 433 is a part number, so ECG 433. And it's a high voltage wire splice kit for CRTs or anode uh, cables. Comes with a nice little instruction here, which I'll throw up a photo of, and it doesn't look too hard at all to join. Very, very minimal effort. Uh, for anyone with any sort of electrical experience, you should be able to do this with a soldering iron. So all in all, I thought, you know what? I'm just going to order the CRT. I'm going to order the, the, the flyback that I think, I'm hoping is right. Well, I was 99.9% sure, sure electrically it would be right. Uh, and I'm going to order this splice kit. Just go for it. I had to wait till they actually got here before I could then make any decisions on how I was going to proceed further. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the CRT now because I think it's going to be best to show you guys how the flyback went in and what the differences are between the two flybacks because there are definitely differences between them that you're going to have to be aware of if you're going to do this mod um, and also I'll give you a good look at the splice kit itself. So here we are in front of the CRT itself now. Um, it's a really nice looking CRT, I love the look of these. If anyone's familiar with the profile uh, range of consumer sort of sort of that high-end consumer Sony CRT, then this is probably the same league as that. Um, and when I was speaking to a guy in Sydney here who repaired these back in the day, he said these are very similar to the Profils, which is, as I said, a really high-end, at the time, Sony um, consumer CRT. Um, so let's just head around the back here and I'll show you what's going on. So I'll just move into the into the spot here, and I'll zoom in here. You see the flyback down in here? So that's the new one that I've put in. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to open this up, and there's a little bit of a... You have to give it a, a decent whack to get this open. So what how this board works, see this board here? So it's actually um, wedges under some hinges here. So I've taken the screws out, but I need to actually move it out, and I need to just tap it on the bottom here. I need two hands with the pliers. I'm just going to put the camera down for a minute and I'll come back and I'll uh, have that opened up. So here we are, I've opened it up so you can get a better look. So there's the fly back there. Okay. And I had to do a lot of cleaning up around this side. There was a lot of flux, etc. around where those fly back connections were. And one of the differences you'll see that I've that well, compared from the old one to the new one, and I'll hold up the old one here, is you'll see this center pin mounting here. Now in hindsight, I probably could have taken this pin off and put it on the new one. So here's an example of the new one here. I'll just put the two next to each other if I can get a good view of them. It's a little bit harder because this one. So the main differences are, you'll see this center pin, as I said, mentioned before here. This one doesn't have it. And the mounting. So the new one only has one mounting foot here. And the other mounting foot down here is a, it, it's not in the same spot as this particular one. So it's just something you've got to be aware of. Um, I could only put in one of the screws for this particular flyback. Obviously put in the top one up the top here, as you can see, over here. This is it here, to mount it, because that's where the weight's going to be. It's going to be obviously wanting to fall down. Uh, there'd be no point putting it in this one here. But as for the electrical pins themselves, they all lined up perfectly. So it was just a matter of getting the old one out and then putting the new one in, soldering the new one in. And then we come across to this HV splice kit. And I've actually had it, I have I had it hooked up before, but I've disconnected it. Um, that's it there. And essentially what it does, and it's gonna be very hard for me to hold this and plug it back in, but you just join the two back up, push, push that bit here into that bit and give it a twist and they lock in together and that's it. The only soldering you have to do is that little silver cup on the end. You can see if I, I might not be able to zoom in and get this, but I'll see if I can. There's a little silver cup. I don't want to pull it all apart. But essentially, if you pull back the wire or cut the wire back about three mil, there's a little hole in the bottom of that cup. You poke the wire into the cup and then you fill that cup up with solder. Do exactly the same thing for that end. Um, they're both exactly the same. The only, thing that diff the only thing that's different between the two is the actual cover over them. So that has that cover, that has that cutter, cover. But all the other components that go in there, and there's only about three of them, so there's like a wire rubber, there's that black plastic, and then there's a cup. Um, and they just basically go in, push it in, and then give it a quarter twist, a twist together, and it does. So I'll just put the camera down, and we'll come back, and I'll plug it in, I'll show you what it looks like. So there we are. That gives you a nice, neat connection when it's all plugged in. 
and all up it probably only took me about 15 20 minutes just to to cut the cable terminate it as i said um the only bit of soldering in is filling up those cups with solder making sure the wires in there you don't have to have a help you don't have, you know, it's only about three mil of wire you have in there um, and then it just yeah quarter twist together and then you've spliced it in and you can see why i needed to do it because it goes the cable actually goes into this h stat block and then from the h stat block up to the cup itself so I, I i had no use for the cup termination on this whatsoever so that's that's it for the repair itself what i'm going to do is i'm just going to close this back up and let's have a look at the results i won't close it back up because i actually want to set the geometry on this and just check it uh, but what i'll do is i'll um i'll put this board back together or, or push it back in i'll power it up and we'll have a look at it from the front so oh, silly me actually forgot to turn the sound on during this bit so we have to put up with a a bit of a voiceover. So what I'm just going to show you here is where to set the geometry. Excuse my shoddy camera work. Uh, I don't actually set the geometry in this because uh, there was no need to. It was pretty much perfect. So I'll show you where the, the pots are anyway. Um, you can see just here there the pin amp pots and these are the vertical pots there. Um, the main horizontal pot is this one here that I'm circling. I had to give that just a tiny tiny adjustment but that was literally it. So coming around to the front, uh, you can have you can see how good this picture is. It's a really really nice picture, um, and you can see how the geometry is. It's it's really really good. Um, there's no bowing. Everything's nice and straight, and everything's nice and uniform. Up here, I'll actually show you where um, an example in the corners of the wooden um, frame. You can see there. I'll point to it up here. It matches perfectly on the other side. So. Uh, once again, there's no use or there's no need to set the geometry. Uh, so that's it for, for this video, guys. Um, as you can see, the picture's really, really good and I'm really happy with the repair itself. So thanks for watching.